Avenger. The road to crime ends in a trap that justice sets. Crime does not pay. Chopping it. 
Now he intends to ruin the entire woods in that section in order to clean up more. Well, that's carrying profiteering a little bit too far. Well, what about that Ringo Tupple who runs a gambling boat out on the river? That place is a disgrace to this community. But what's to be done about it? As far as I can see, all we can do is start the ball rolling to have a few laws enacted to restrain these people. That would take too much time, Edwin. I have another plan, but I do not feel at liberty to discuss it here. Well, where can we discuss it, then? The utmost secrecy will be required, but I think my plan will prove quick and effective. Well, when can we hear it, Gleason? We're willing to listen. Those who are interested will meet in the deserted barn at Cronin Corners tomorrow night. I thought it might be well to adopt a plan to shield the identity of those who wish to work within this group. There is a package here for each of you. It contains a robe and hood. Wear them tomorrow night. Otherwise, you cannot be admitted to the hooded circle. I'm glad you and Fern were able to drive out here to Springville with me, Jim. So am I, Inspector. That anonymous note you received interested me. Inspector, what was in that note to bring you and Jim Tearing out here to Springville? Well, among other things, Fern, it contained a warning that Springville is in for a reign of terror. But isn't this outside your territory? Yes, it is. I called the Springville sheriff about it, but he's laid up, so he wants me to take over for the time being. Well, of course, Inspector, we may be out here on a wild goose chase. An anonymous letter, nine times out of ten, is written by a crank. Well, uh, this one's worth checking on, Jim. Where do you think we ought to begin? Drive down to the courthouse. I'll make a few inquiries of the officials there. Who's there? It's number 14, bringing in Ringo Tupple. Springville. 
You may go armed for your own protection, but no violence will be sanctioned. The Hooded Circle will meet here again on Thursday night when the next assignment will be given. Good luck, Jack of Spades. <laughs> Where's the inspector, Jim? I thought he was to meet us here on the porch of the hotel. He's still out trying to trace that letter, friend. Have you made any headway on that, Jim? No, and I'm glad we haven't. So glad? Why? Because that means it probably was the work of a crank, and that no reign of terror is threatening Springville. I hated to think that perhaps a group of citizens here had decided to take the law into their own hands. You think that's what the letter implies? Yes. And that sort of thing, regardless of its intention, is vicious and unpatriotic. It should have no place in a civilized society where the law of the land is the best law for each individual living under it. You're right, Jim. Oh, here comes the inspector now. And he looks as though he swallowed a canary. Uh, Jim, we've hit on something big here. What have you found out, Inspector? Come upstairs, Jim. In ten minutes, we're going to have a very interesting visitor. <laughs> Sure, nobody saw you coming here, Tupple. No, I came in the side entrance and used the service elevator. Good. Sit over there and we'll get down to business. Thanks, Inspector. Now, uh, Tupple, repeat that story you told me to Brandon here. Well, it's like this, Mr. Brandon. I run that big gambling boat on Cala River. Last night, some guy waylays me on the dock, sticks a gun in my back, and blindfolds me. Next thing I know, we're in a car driving like mad. Any idea of the direction? No, I lost all sense of that. Go ahead. Well, anyway, in about a half an hour, I find myself in a big deserted barn someplace surrounded by about 20 guys in robes and hoods. They call themselves the Hooded Circle, Jim. Oh, that letter was on the level. It looks that way. Well, go ahead, Tubble. Well, these guys warned me to get out of town or cut out the gambling on my boat. I could see that they meant business, so I agreed to cut out the gambling. Uh, get to the part about the cards, Tubble. Yeah, that was the craziest part of the whole thing. They gave me cards to deal out to the men. And the man who got the jack of spades was elected to pull some kind of a job. What was the job? I don't know. They locked me up after that, and I couldn't hear much of what was going on. You did hear something, though. Well, as far as I could make out, they had it in for somebody by the name of Spear, or well, maybe it was Greer, some name like that. Oh. Have you any idea who that might be? No, I've been trying to figure that one out all morning, but I can't tie that tag up with anybody I know around here. Well, thank you, Tupple. You've been a great help to us. We'll go right to work on this. For the time being, Tuffle, and for your own safety, you'd better not take a chance on getting in touch with us directly. But keep your ears and eyes open. I sure will, Mr. Brandon. If anything develops, suppose you telephone Miss Collier here at the hotel. Veil your message carefully. The inspector and I will figure it out. And thanks again. <laughs> Yeah, that's Jim. 14 West Maple Street. Well, Fern, I hope we have more luck with the Greers than we had with the Spears. Yes. Which Greer is this? Ambrose. I'm being systematic and taking them in alphabetical order. Oh, good. Say, this is quite a pretentious-looking place. Well, come on. Let's take the bull by its horns. Well, according to the telephone book, this Ambrose Greer owns a whole string of sawmills. Well, that sounds respectable enough. Doesn't seem to be anyone at home, Jim. Oh, well, it must be. I can see a light burning on the back of the house. Maybe you'd better try the door, Jim, just in case anything might be wrong in there. I think I will. Hmm. The door is open, Fern. Come on. Anybody home? He would hardly have left the door unlocked if he went out, would he? I don't think so. Let's investigate that light on the back of the house. All right. Through the hall here. Fern, stay back. Don't come in here. What is it, Jim? Go to the telephone, quick. Call Inspector White. Tell him we found the first victim of the hooded circle. He's been murdered.
The Avenger and the Hooded Circle. Oh, there just ahead is the third barn we picked out for the famous afternoon friend. This one's in a much more deserted section than the other two in. Well, let's pull up and see, huh? around here recently. Look at those tire marks. Come on, Fern, let's investigate the barn. This is the place. I'm surprised that the door isn't locked. It's got a big latch here on the inside. We'll leave the door open so we can see. Fern, this is the meeting place, all right. Look, here are the remains of several candles, and here's the wrapper from a pack of cards. Well, what now, Jim? Tuttle said he was locked in a small shed at the end of the barn. Let's look for that. Jim, here's the door. This must be it. Oh, yes. This is the shed. Everything ties up there. Yes. Now we've got to get back to town as fast as we can. I want to put in a telephone call to Tuffle. Tuffle? What for? I want a complete description of those robes and hoods. For just one meeting, the inspector and I are going to pose as members of the Hooded Circle. You're making up with your sewing, Fern. Oh, I seem to do all right on the straight seat, but I get ahead of myself on the sharp curve. Well, this robe looks as if it might hold together for one meeting anyway. <laughs> now, Inspector, no remarks from you. After all, when I was hired as Jim's secretary and assistant, I was not informed that plain sewing would also be required. <laughs> oh, will you answer it, Fern, please? All right, Jim. Hello? Yes, this is Miss Collier. Oh, yes, I'd be glad to take a message. I know who it's for, Mr. Tuffle. Go ahead. Right. I have it. Thank you very much. What did Tuffle say, Fern? It didn't make any sense to me. He said, I've been invited to a private game of cards tonight at 10 o'clock. Fine. That means the Hooded Circle is meeting tonight. Come on, Fern, back to your sewing. We've got to get those costumes finished. <laughs> shed where we hide, Inspector. Hey, Jim, would you mind explaining why we came out here to this barn before 9 o'clock when the meeting isn't scheduled till 10? We had to be the first arrivals, Inspector, in order to get in here. When meeting time rolls around, they probably have a guard stationed at the door. They may even have a password of some kind. No use taking a chance on being challenged. I guess you're right at that, but I'm not so sure we'll get away with this anyway, Jim. Our chances are good if we're careful. Ringo Tuffle said there were about 20 members of the Hooded Circle. I don't think two more are likely to be noticed. Now, come on. Let's get into these okay. hoods and robes. All right. Okay. Hey, Jim, what about this angle? Suppose Tuffle is called upon to deal a card to each member. If there are 20 members, he'll only be given 20 cards to deal out. That means we'll have to be left out of the dealing. Now, won't that be obvious? Well, it would be, except that I've arranged for that emergency. Yeah, uh-huh. I had friend call Tuffle before we left tonight and tell him just to pretend to deal cards to you and me. But how in blazes will he know it? Like this. Now, hold out your hand. Uh-huh. Yeah, palm up. Uh-huh. There. Now, that red what? mark I make in the center of your palm will identify you to Tuffle. So far, so good. But, of course, you realize we could be walking right into a perfect trap, Jim. I know that. But it's the chance we have to take. However, if we don't show up at the hotel restaurant by 1 o'clock, Fern has instructions to call the state police. Well... In the meantime, all we can do is wait and hope this scheme of yours works. Quiet, please. Quiet. The meeting of the Hooded Circle is called to order. The first and most important matter to be brought before this meeting is the unfortunate fate of Ambrose Greer. The circumstance would indicate that someone present here tonight killed Greer. I find it very difficult to believe that. But if it is true, that man must be punished for his crime. Who received the jack of spades at our last meeting? Will no one answer? Order, please, order, order. Well, who that man was, only he himself knows. 
Greer must have been killed in self-defense. No member of this circle would kill in cold blood. But what's all this the newspapers are saying about Greer being robbed? I don't believe those stories have any basis in fact. However, let this tragedy be a lesson to all of us to act cautiously and wisely in the future. Nothing more than a warning must be given to these others on our list. Well, who's next? Let's get this over with. Jarvis Payton. Tell him his timber-cutting days in Springville are over. Give him 48 hours to get out of town. Payton's away on business. He won't be back until tomorrow morning. That'll be time enough. Now, uh, bring in Tupple. We'll let him cut the cards. Right. The man who gets the jack of spades will handle this next assignment. And I would caution him once more. Give Payton a warning. Nothing else. Here's Tupple. Oh, here you are, Tupple. Twenty cards. Each man will leave as he receives his card. Now, shuffle and deal them, Tupple. For a better Springville. <laughs> Isn't the inspector joining us for a midnight snack? No, her and the inspector went to bed. Looks like we're going to have a big day tomorrow. We found, we found out plenty at that meeting tonight. We did. Well, you're not going to hold out on me, are you, Jim? <laughs> you can wait another day, can't you? You do know who killed Greer, then. Yes, and by this time tomorrow, the criminal will be apprehended. Oh, I hope so. I'm anxious to get away from Springville and its hooded circle. Well, one thing was evident at that meeting tonight. The hooded circle is composed of a group of amateurs. No professional troublemakers have moved in yet. That ought to make it easier to dissolve. But how are you going to expose Greer's murder again? A man by the name of Jarvis Payton is next on the list to be visited by a member of the Hooded Circle. Payton lives alone in the Timberland beyond the lake. He'll arrive home from a business trip in the morning. And I think he's marked for murder. And if I know you, you're going out there tonight to wait for him. Right, Fern. The Avenger must be on hand in the morning when Payton's murderer arrives.
been proved to the satisfaction of this court that the members of the hooded circle were only inadvertently connected with the crime of murder for which Ringo Tupple has been convicted. I hereby suspend the sentences of these 20 men in order to give them a chance to prove themselves good citizens of their country. These men are not blameless, and they will be held answerable to this court for their actions at all times. Therefore, I would warn them to remember this. Pride in one's native city is not sufficient reason to set oneself up as a good citizen. The laws of your land must stand above all the petty aims of prejudice and pride. Let the lesson in good government that you have learned here at this trial banish from your minds all that is not tolerant and just and right for all. Those who hide behind a mask to impose their will on others have robbed themselves of the great protection of the laws that countless men have suffered to create and to preserve down through the centuries. Guard those laws. Do not tamper with them. Case dismissed. Well, Jim. I guess that winds up our assignment in Springville. Yes, Fern. Come on, let's duck out this side door. Right. Somehow, one would never expect to encounter a clever criminal like Tupple in a town like Springville. He was clever, all right. I'll admit he had me buffaloed at the beginning. What has led you to suspect him, Jim? He never told me. When the inspector and I attended that meeting of the hooded circle, I saw Tupple palming a card as he dealt them. I realized then that he himself was taking the jack of spades. That way, he was able to commit the crime rob his wealthy victim, and at the same time deceive the members of the hooded circle into thinking that one of their own number was guilty. Tupple informed on the hooded circle just to throw sand in your arm? Right. That anonymous letter was sent by one of the men who attended the first meeting of the circle and then became frightened. Check. Hey, Jim, look. Those men are starting a big bonfire in the courthouse yard. Yes. It's the ex-members of the hooded circle. They are burning their robes in public. Well, Fern... I guess this town's growing pains are over. Springville has come of age. All characters, names, places, and plots used in the Avenger program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Avenger.